Hi, Chad here with Purple Collar Leif, and as you can see, she's back. The Polaris Ranger's back here at home. I'm in the woods exploring a little bit. It's great to have the side-by-side -side back. Let me talk to you about why it was gone, what all had to happen to it, how happy we are with the service, and who I recommend. Stay tuned. Well, if you're new to the channel, you probably have not even ever seen our Polaris Ranger Crew 500 EFI. And that's because in the middle of last winter, uh, just shortly after I shot a video called Understanding the Polaris Ranger Drive Modes, where I talk about the single rear wheel drive, the differential lock, two wheel rear wheel drive, and then the all wheel drive. Not long after that, I was driving this through some pretty deep snow in our yard put it in four-wheel drive, was going up a pretty decent grade, and heard a major clunk in the front end. From that clunk forward, I had no four-wheel drive. Not in reverse, not in forward. Um, I could tell there was something wrong in the front end, in the front part of the transmission, or on the front axle. I wasn't sure exactly what was wrong. So I called a couple experts. I called a couple repair shops that specialize in Polaris Rangers or other ATVs and UTVs. They gave a variety of possibilities of what it could be, what they see most common, uh, based on my description, what they thought it might be. There's a famous scene in a movie where Dirty Harry says, a man's gotta know his limitations. And as soon as I talked to a couple repair people, I witnessed that clunk. I knew my limitations. Yes, this channel is all about purple collar life. I love doing things with my hands. I like figuring things out. I like to try to fix things on my own. But when it comes to something like the Ranger, uh, it's not a cheap piece of equipment. I knew the repair wasn't going to be inexpensive, but I also knew it was beyond my skill level. Uh, all the possibilities from the easiest to the hardest were beyond what I was willing or confident to tackle on my own. So a good friend of mine named Rusty has his own repair shop. It's called Rusty's Power Sports. If you are anywhere near Western Pennsylvania, he is located around the Butler area, so if you watch Outdoors with the Morgans, he's not far from where they are located, and I highly recommend you call Rusty's Power Sports. I'll put his banner up onto the screen here so you can see it. It's got his phone number on it. He specializes in UTV, ATV. He's the guy to take a look at it. And I'm glad I took it to Rusty because it ended up being way more than I thought it was going to be as far as the amount of things this side-by-side -side needed. So a little bit of backstory on this. I bought this at a really good price. It needed some work at the time. It needed the drive belt replaced, but the guy had a used drive belt from on it before. So I went ahead and even though I didn't know exactly what I was doing, I watched some videos, put that used drive belt back on here, and it ran okay for while we had it. I always thought, boy, this is pretty noisy. I always thought it's really jerky when you're accelerating, but I thought maybe that's just how this is. This is a 2011 Polaris Ranger Crew 500. And I thought, well, maybe after nine or 10 years, they just get a little loose like this. They get noisy. I'd seen people with newer side-by-sides. They were much quieter. They seemed much more smooth to operate, but I thought maybe that's just how this one was. I got a good deal on it. That's what I'm gonna have to live with. So Rusty did take care of fixing the entire front end and I'll go over a list of what all it was. I really appreciated that as he took it apart, he took pictures to show me. It was about a thousand little parts that he had to disassemble from the differential, the axles, the splines, everything had to come out of that front end. Um, it looks in the pictures like it's down to the frame. I'll put pictures in the video here so you can see what all he had to do to it. But in addition to that, he fixed all my problems with the bad belt, the jerky driving, the noisiness, the difficulty shifting the transmission between park, reverse, low, neutral, high, all those shifts were difficult and clunky. I didn't know that they weren't supposed to be that way. He was able to fix all those things. So let's go over a list of what all needed done to this Ranger. But before we even get there, I'll say, even if you saw this Ranger on our videos a year ago, you never saw it like this. This Ranger probably has not been this clean since it was new, really. 
And I, I asked Rusty, I said, how did you get it so clean? He said, you know, he washed it all up. And I said, well, what'd you do to make the plastic all look so good? Because it had been scraped and scuffed and it didn't ever seem shiny like this. So I'll share with you what he suggested I try. This is the Maxima SC1 uh, by Maxima Racing Oils. High gloss coating on the top of the can it says Magic Spray. Makes the world shiny. New bike in a can. So this is for dirt bikes, UTVs. Uh, it shows a picture of off-road trucks bicycles. I am really impressed with how Rusty used this to clean this entire machine. I'll put a link to this down below. This is available on Amazon. I can put an Amazon affiliate link. If you're interested in it and you use that link, thank you very much. Amazon does give us a slight commission for sending you to their site. Doesn't cost you anything extra. Just helps us out here at the channel. So this really does a nice job cleaning up all the plastic, the floor, the tires, the rims. The front hood plastic was all scraped up and scuffed up. This did an awesome job. I actually got the Ranger back a couple weeks ago and Mackenzie has been dying to take it out in the woods and try it out. But I kept saying, no, no, it's so clean. Don't take it out. I want to make a video about it first. So she'll be glad I've shot this video now so she can take this out on the trails. So let's talk about all the things that Rusty did to this. I've got a list here on my phone, but I can tell you I've driven it around. It runs like a brand new machine. No jerky driving, uh, nice smooth transitions between gears, nice smooth start up when you start going, way quieter. It doesn't sound like a rattle trap going down the trails anymore. So, so glad I had a professional take care of this instead of me trying to fix this front end. First of all, I don't think I ever would have been able to fix the front end. But second of all, I wouldn't have fixed all those other things that were wrong, that were constant annoyances and possibly even damaging the machine further. So, of course, while it was there, went ahead and got a full synthetic oil change, oil flush, oil filter, got a brand new drive belt, uh, got a primary spring, front strut springs and bushings, front wheel bearings, ball joints, front brake pads, front half axles, front A-arm bushings, front drive shaft U-joint, rear drive shaft U-joint, center drive shaft bearing, air intake, differential gasket set, bolt tie rod, nut and lock for the strut, front differential output hubs, front strut top and bottom bushing pivots, front differential rotary cage, and the front differentials on these Polaris Ranger 2011, 500 crew, the differential itself is about $1,100. Now that's a big investment to put into a machine. Yes, this is still worth some good money, but that's a big chunk of money to spend on something money on one piece, one component to get this fixed. Rusty was able to disassemble the differential for this side-by-side, -side, get all the pieces that were broken from inside, and totally rebuild it. So eliminating that $1,100 brand new differential cost and cutting it way down to just the broken components and then disassembly and reassembly. So I'm so thankful that I chose Rusty's Power Sports to fix the side-by-side. -side. Like I said, he did a great job fixing the problem that I knew about, and he also fixed all those other annoying things that I thought were just normal for my side-by-side. -side. We're gonna go ahead and take some apples out for the deer, put it by the salt block. Um, Jennifer's mom makes a lot of homemade applesauce. She gives us all the peels. We put them out, the deer love them.
Now let's go for a ride back through the woods. I'll show you a couple changes I'd like to make here on the property, talk to you about why those changes are necessary. And I wanted to show you while we're back here, this is my new air intake. So Rusty was talking to me about kind of a flaw or a deficiency in the system. As you know, the engine's back here underneath the bed. Then there's an air line, fresh air intake, comes underneath the machine all the way up here to the front end. And the problem with that is, you know, you go through a lot of dirt, mud, snow, and that's a long line of air line that can get crushed, full of dirt, full of debris, and you can't see it, you don't know that anything's wrong, and it kind of starves your engine when your engine's looking for fresh air. This system, he was able to cut through the side here, run this line up, put a tube up here. That allows me to get fresh air from back here. I can see the tube. I can make sure that I'm getting good air going into it. Much better system, much easier to service, and I think it'll be a, a better solution in the long run. That's what Rusty recommended. If you've been watching the channel a while, you probably recognize this bridge, one of the creek crossings that we go over, the path between my house and my parents' house, the original homestead. So what I think happened that partially ruined the differential on this Polaris Ranger is past this bridge is a pretty rough area. It stays wet most of the time. It actually used to be a pond. And a lot of times this thing will be up to its axles crawling through that mud, hitting old pipelines, hitting old rocks, hitting old stumps. And it forces that automatic all-wheel drive transmission to kind of constantly send power all around the machine to try to get you moving through that mud. There have been times that I've had this machine stuck in so much mud that I couldn't get it out, had to use the Honda Foreman to pull it out. In hindsight, in retrospect, all those things probably really damaged this differential and I only have myself to blame for not treating it properly. I know these are made for trails. Uh, what we have is probably not even really considered trails. They're barely considered paths. They're very muddy, they're very rough, and probably too rough for a machine like this that I need to use for hauling firewood, uh, taking supplies to and from the garage or the house. I don't want to damage it again, so we're gonna make some changes. We go on a lot of these paths because, well, they're the paths that exist. But there's big, huge rocks that stick up that hit things like the skid guards underneath here. Uh, there's a lot of stumps. This is in the middle of a right-of-way, so there's brush that grows up. It gets pretty thick sometimes. And if you've been watching the channel, you know we bought additional property. So the homestead is now larger than it was before. And we want to make the best use of that property. We want to have trails to ride around on. We want to be able to get from our house to the other homestead properties fairly easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to clear some more trails. And if you've watched the videos from before, you know we have a lot of cricks to cross here. We're going to take care of that. We're going to try to get some pipe or find some ways to make safe crossings around those cricks so that we can make use of all the land that we have. I'd like to have miles of trails through this land that we can ride on easily. Right now, we have all this land and only a few trails to ride on and really only one route down this right away that gets to the original homestead, which is my parents' house. So we're gonna make some changes, hopefully this winter. We're gonna have to talk to a couple people and see what the best way to get across these cricks, something heavy duty enough. I'm thinking bridges won't be the, the correct option because I wanna be able to drive tractors across it, the side-by-side, -side, the dirt bike. I'd rather have something solid ground 
And if you watch the videos, you know we get some high water, so it's got to be built up enough, but still a big enough culvert for the water to flow through in high water times. So that's what you can look forward to seeing here on the channel, is building new trails here in the woods for the side-by-side -side so that we don't damage it again, for the tractor to go back and forth, and even walking trails would be nice for us to take the dog and, and walk around the trails here on the property. So thanks for watching this video. We're so glad to have the Polaris Ranger back. Just like Clint Eastwood says, a man's got to know his limitations. I know mine. I am purple collar, but this was beyond what I could fix. And uh, if you like videos like this, click that thumbs up button, comment down below, share with your friends. And if you're not already a subscriber, you know what to do. Thanks. We'll see you again the next time.